Well, what's the SP? What's up? Right, Mr. London, you have just signed on the register for unemployment benefits. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, someone already beat me to the Magna Carta. <laughs> you have also denied doing any form of work when asked by one of my officers. Well, look, we didn't really paint the Umber Bridge. It was only a wind-up. <laughs> Humber Bridge? Mr. London, I have in my possession a signed statement from a very trustworthy and public-spirited citizen to a very different effect. Oh, now you're on a wind-up, aren't you? I ain't done no graft. There is also a photograph which does somewhat back up this statement. You are seen in it very clearly taking money for services rendered. <coughs> you're off your blooming trolley, mate. What photograph? This photograph, Mr. London. Here, yeah, that's me and Lois. Well, who took that then? Oh, a public-minded citizen, you said. Oh, I might have sussed. Well, I'll tell you what, you and Bertie flipping all night have come unstuck this time. I don't believe geezers like you, I really don't, straight up. I just think blokes like you lot run this green and pleasant of ours, don't you? Well, I'll tell you what, mate, you ain't a full quid note. No, you're 19 bob short. <laughs> so... <laughs> you deny the allegation, then, Mr London? Oh, you're alive, then. <laughs> Who are you, then? What, Kipper in a yard? <laughs> Me, Mr. London. My name is Tucker. <laughs> DHSS Fraud Section. Oh no, Jeffrey Buggle. <laughs> they put that heavy on. Oh, whatever my name's. Not DHSS. <laughs> I must warn you, Mr. London, that at this very moment, a colleague of mine is taking a statement from one Miss Lois Tite at her home. <laughs> oh, no! Anything but that! I must also caution you, Mr. London, that anything further you may say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. I'll oh, leave it out, you Wally. <laughs> you working in with your foot, or what? I don't think that you fully understand the seriousness of your position, Mr. London. Oh? I know all about positions, me, mate. I'm a black belt Kama Sutra. <laughs> Kama what? <laughs> what the hell's he talking about? It's a book. Hmm? It's an Indian book. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Page 58 is the one you want, mate. Yeah. Show you how you can disappear in short, sharp, jerky movies. <laughs> Gone. He's popped his socks. Oh, oh me sitting tethered has curled up his tootsies. <laughs> nice little bedroom upstairs, lick of paint, few mirrors on the ceiling. <laughs> as quiet as the grave. Oh, God. Oh, you frightened the life out of me, you did. I nearly gave birth to a set of dustbins. <laughs> What was you doing then? Well, I was listening. Have a listen. What? <clears throat> I can't hear a thing. Not a breath. It's great, isn't it? I reckon he's brown bread. Oh, don't be so wicked. He's probably got his head down. Yeah, permanently. Oh, <laughs> don't. You're morbid, you are. Your Aunt Minnie would turn in her grave if she could hear you. She was cremated. <laughs> well, she'd turn in her urn. <laughs> She was very fond of that old chap, you know. Anyway, I don't mean the old boy any harm, you know. It's quiet, though, isn't it? I told you, he's probably got his head down. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry about the trouble you had. Oh, he's a dirty rat, that man. Oh, well, Bertie. I think of a better name for him than Rat. Still, anyway, it weren't your fault, love. You put him straight, didn't you? All I did was tell him the truth, Jim. I mean, you did me and Dad a favour. Couldn't expect you to pay for the nuts and bolts to put it up with, could we? Just as well I kept the receipts in, eh? <laughs> I fancy that old Bertie. What a rat taking photos. Yeah, lucky he didn't catch me adjusting your verticals. <laughs> oh, Jim! <laughs> <laughs> you are crude. Yeah. I've had a fault, you know. I ain't adjusted your horizontals yet, either, have I? <laughs> Start, Jim London. Listen, I'm starting, ain't me problem. It's finishing. <laughs> later, later, down, boy. Oh. oh, by the way, 
The bloke from the DHSS came round to see the rat fink after he left me. He was out back, hacking away at his roses. Always does that when he's got the ump. I don't think they was too pleased with him. Well, listen, I'm pleased with you anyway. <coughs> Come here, no escape this time. I could scream. No. <coughs> don't Adam and Eve. <laughs> you, darling, are leading a charmed life. Oh, shame. I'll get it on my way out. Wish I could get it going in or coming out. <laughs> oh, sorry, darling. <laughs> um, Tosh. Tosh, that you, mate? <laughs> He's inside. No, mate. Come in, put the wood in the hole. Oh, dear Jimbo, that's a bit tasty. Was that the maid? She would have been if you didn't have such lousy time, <laughs> mate. <laughs> sorry, son. Very nice, though. Yeah. Coming round to dinner tonight. Oh, tell very much, mate. Not you, you burger. <laughs> oh, cool. So, this is it then, eh? Yeah, got potential. Very cosy like. Yeah, be right when I get it spruced up, a little lick of paint here and there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, what's up, son? Had a right old time finding you. Near roughly the manor, but not the exact street. Popped Ooh. into your old dad like he told me where. Yeah, well, I ain't had time to send out them posh cars yet. You know the ones I mean? Mr. James London now resides at 17 Railway Terrace. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, yeah, very grand, I'm sure. Now, listen, I'll tell you why I popped round. I can still do a deal on some paint if you're interested. Oh, terrific, yeah, I'll have some of that, yeah. Couldn't get any mirrors, could ya? <laughs> mirrors? Yeah, you saw... Well, just put me down with a couple of cannons of paint. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> mirrors. Oh, you got it now, have you? Yeah. <laughs> So, where'd you get the paint, then? Now, now, naughty, naughty, Jimbo. You know better than to ask questions. Uh, let's just say uh, I've still got contacts. Oh, well, please yourself, mate. About a week's time, OK? Yeah, no problem. Uh, usual terms, of course. Uh, pound notes. Well, I weren't thinking of paying you in kind, was I, Ducky? Oh, I should hope not. Oh, dear me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, I might be tempted by your own help, like. On your bike, pal. <laughs> yeah, right then. Yeah. I like this street. Do good business here. Yeah? Who else wants painting? No, not paint me, old son. Did a bit of business with a, a neighbour of yours the other day. A neighbour of mine? Yeah, that posh but down the road. Mm. Mind you, found out after the geezer's a local councillor. Mm. Blow his top if he knew where that ladder came from. <laughs> you mean that ladder? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the one I half inch from the council yard. <laughs> Mind you, mum's the word, Jimbo. I wouldn't like to drop the geezer oh, in the... Uh, no, no, yeah, no. Last yeah. thing I'd do, Toss. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> I'll be off, then. Yeah, see you next week, son. All the best, mate. Check me by, mate. Cheers, Tosh. <laughs> well, well, well. Fancy that. Old Bertie in possession of a bent ladder. Hmm. <laughs> well, how's that for a game of soldiers? <laughs> Playing it. Oh, sorry, Bertie. Did I frighten you? <laughs> Not intended. Just pop round to thank you for the nice photo. Ah, yes, well, just doing my duty as a public official, you understand? Nothing personal. No, of course not, Bertie. Yeah, very public-spirited, I thought. Yes, well, one does one's duty when one must. And for the last time, will you please refrain from addressing me in that manner? Councillor will suffice. Oh, right you are, Bertie. <laughs> you are an impertinent young layabout. God only knows why your aunt, God rest her soul, never dreamed of leaving that house to you. It gets right up your nose, doesn't it, Bertie? Me being left that house after all the years you spent blowing down her ear hole. Go away. Oh, and one last thing. Do get that guttering fixed on your property, or I shall have no option but to make a report to the public health inspector. You already did that, Bertie. You came round the other day. I tried to be as public-spirited as you, you know, yeah. I said, I said to him, I said, don't you want to worry about this guttering up here? You want to do something about the rat problem we got in these terraces? 
coming round your house Thursday. <laughs> The likes of you haven't an ounce of public spirit in your body. You haven't even got the backbone to find a job. Find the job because of dickheads like you, mate. It's easier to find the lost city of Atlantis. You're just a young layabout that doesn't deserve the right to live in the same terrace as good, honest, hard-working citizens. Well, like you? Yes, like me. Now, go away and stop pestering me. Oh, honest? Honest? <laughs> nice ladder, that, Bertie. Looks almost new. Go away. About five feet eight brown hair. Where's a black donkey jacket, right? What are you rambling on about? <laughs> Bloke who flogged you that ladder. Mate of mine. Well, he looked your type. We're well, not my type of like Bertie. Always on the thief. Know what I mean? What are you trying to imply? Well, good nick that ladder, innit? Oh, I know a bargain when I see one. Uh, besides, the poor wretch of a man needed the money quickly. I'm always on hand to help those in need. It's all part of my official function. It's called public spiritedness, subject foreign to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You lay out a tenner for a 60 quid ladder out of the goodness of your little art. Oh, yes. What a saintly geezer you are, straight up. Go away. I just wondered how it looked at the press what to find out. <laughs> Press, find out what the devil are you babbling on about. Well, can't you imagine it? Local public spirited councillor buys nicked ladder. Mm. <laughs> Nick? Stolen? From the council depot. <laughs> oh, I keep getting this funny urge to be public spirited like you, Bertie. <laughs> I must keep fighting it off. I, I must keep. keep. But I, I keep. No, I must keep fighting off. I must keep from spilling the beans. Oh, wait, come back. I can't. I can't. The public spirit's got me. It's got me really bad. <laughs> I purchased that in good faith. I didn't know. Oh, oh, that might well be true, Bertie. The police might believe you. But think the local press, the opposition. Ooh, the, ooh. I must go and lie down. Mr. London, please, we must talk. I rest. I must rest. Mr. London! If I was you, I'd get rid of that paintbrush and all. <laughs> that was very nice, Jim. Thank you. Well, that was it. If I do say so myself, you know. Didn't realise I was a black belt origami, did you? Surely. I saw the takeaway bags in the rubbish bin. A lie. I've been fitted up. <laughs> it was nice, just the same. Cheers. Cheers. Jim? Hmm? You know when you was talking to Ratfink earlier on? Oh, look, don't spoil a good night, darling. No, sorry, but what did you say to him? Well, we just talked about public spiritedness and all that jazz. Why? Well, just after you left, he did a very strange thing. Mm hmm? Yeah, he went a bit dotty, I reckon. Know what he did? Hung himself with a bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that good. He rushed off down to his garden shed, grabbed hold of a whopping great saw, come back and set about that new ladder of his. Cut it all in bits, he did. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> then he put all the bits in a great big heap and set the lot alight. <laughs> it's really weird, don't you reckon? Oh, yeah, yeah. Must be something to do with his public spiritedness going about. <laughs> Worse than a dose of the flu it is. Anyway. Look, um, I'll tell you what. Let's forget about that Bertie flipping all nut. Oh, Jim. Whatever are you going to do? Well, I uh, thought I'd adjust your contrasts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sort of demand payment for services rendered. <laughs> How's my signal coming through? Oh, loud and clear on all channels, darling. <laughs> Him getting 
his head down. Yeah. Well, he's got it up again now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.